born again and be able to navigate that you know life that they are going through because if they are young and they're going to continue to grow in god that means there are many more things they will need to learn in god and about god and you may start out with something that they are okay with and that they accept and then they grow and they say look i've, I've caught a revelation <laughs> and then it becomes an issue number eight are you sure you have god's approval thank god for parental approval parental consent thank god for pastoral approval pastoral consent thank god for family approval family consent thank god for all those stuff but do you have the approval of god because at the end of it your parents will not be in that marriage with you at the end of it your pastor will not be in that marriage with you it's going to be you and your spouse so do you have god's approval these are questions you need to get answers to before you go into any relationship number nine do you know is or are strengths and weaknesses so when you say you are cutting part of what you do in courtship is to be able to settle these things so as a matter of fact when you guys meet um whenever you meet when you are cutting for those that are not yet married it's there's supposed to be an agenda for the day or an agenda for the week or an agenda for the month so can say okay Today's meeting is we're going to watch a film. Today's meeting is we're going to do a book review. Today's meeting is we're fasting and prayer. Today's I'm praying. Today's meeting is we're going to have develop a life plan. So you need to have agenda. Or else when you have no agenda, you come in there and the enemy gives you an agenda. So do you know their strengths and their weaknesses? This will help you to begin to prepare on how to excel. So even when you get married, knowing the strengths and weaknesses of your spouse helps you to be able to beat their strengths where they are weak. Number 10, do you know what you want? Do you know what you want? You see, if you don't know what you want, you won't even know when you find it. So a lot of people don't know what they want. And because they don't know what they want, when they find it, they can't know. A lot of people already have what they need. But because they don't know what they want, they are not appreciating what they have. And they are looking for what is not lost. There are lots of people, and he or she compliments your vision and purpose in life. Can he or she complements your vision and purpose in life so you have a vision you have a purpose your spouse has a vision your spouse has a purpose when you come together can you complement one another or is marrying that person going to equal to you having to suspend your dreams and visions in life or having to reduce your global dream to a local version so you need to settle all this because every vision has a small version and you may end up being locked down in the small version of life because of the person you're married to. 13. Can you complement his or her vision and purpose in life? Set to number 14. Does he or she have a vision and purpose? Is there even a vision and purpose? Because many times the vision of some people is just to marry. And after they marry, they become visionless. The next vision will be to have children. And then you begin to realize that they don't have anything that is beyond, you know, just normal life. <laughs> Okay, let's move on. Then, do you have a vision and purpose? Because if you don't have one, you shouldn't even be talking of marriage. Number 16, are they flexible and understanding or are they rigid and uncompromising? A lot of people are just rigid. It's like the law of the meat and pasture. This is the way it is and so shall it be and it's fine now. And then you realize that you have entered one chance. All these things are things that should have been settled before marriage because these are actually courtship issues that will help you to be able to plan well for that relationship. Number 17, can you proudly introduce them in public? Can you proudly introduce them in public? This person you're going out with, is this someone you can introduce in public or someone that you are ashamed of introducing to people? 18, are you ready to accept him or her with his or her strengths and weaknesses? I've given you a definition of marriage. When we started out, marriage is a covenant commitment to love an imperfect person unconditionally for the rest of your life. Marriage is a covenant commitment to love an imperfect person unconditionally for the rest of your life. So it means that whoever you're going to get married to is not going to be perfect. There is no Mr. Perfect. There is no Mrs. Perfect. Nobody is perfect. I'm not better than you. You are not better than me. We are all better than what we used to be. Everybody is a work in progress. So are you ready to accommodate their weaknesses knowing fully well that you also have yours? Because there is no Mr. Perfect or Miss Perfect anywhere. Then number 19. Do you relate with him or her as a friend 
and then number 20 do you accept his or our friends as your friends so are you both friends do you relate as friends because one of the things that affects relationship is when people are not friends it affects a lot of relationship when you are friends there are a lot of things that you are sensitive to and sensitive about that you take personal you just begin to manifest They're like oh, little year now What's, uh, because you, when you are with your friends you can yab each other you can poke fun at each other you can make jest of each other but if you are not friends everything say you see me i talking to her how can you come down and say, hey, 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 calm down calm down it's not that deep <laughs> so you need to have friendship between each other and then do you accept their own friends as your friends because the challenge is that a lot of people when they met you they met you with friends they saw you in the midst of the friends. They know these are your friends. And then when they now come into a relationship with you, they now want to separate you from your friends. I don't want you to move with those people. I don't want to see you with those people. Hello. These are the people I was with before I met you. Now you don't want to see them. What exactly is the issue? Because sometimes it might be as a result of insecurity. And sometimes it might be as a result of, of that person being someone that you should run from. Because sometimes one of the things that people do is they separate you from everybody that matters to you. They separate you from your friends, they separate you from your family, they separate you from authority figures in your life so that they will isolate you to destroy you. They isolate you to manipulate you, they isolate you to control you. These are all signs of, uh, you know, a psychopath. When someone is a psychopath or a sociopath or someone that has personality disorder, these are all the signs. Everybody around you is wrong, everybody around you is an angel, everybody around you is devil. They want to separate you to themselves alone, it's trouble. 21 is your genotype compatible we can go on and on and on on that you know the drill so don't get into a relationship because you love the person and genotype is not compatible you say god will do it no if you believe god let god change the genotype before you marry because by the time the pain of the children starts that love you think you have for each other it will be in and out of hospital you will see how easy problem can drain that emotional <laughs> connection out of your life so don't get into that oh, please 22 are you both hiv negative so you need to go around some tests number 23 are you both drug free because many of you don't realize that there are a lot of people that you are in relation with their own drugs and when they begin to manifest you know that this is not normal it's mental 24 are you both alcohol free because you know i just take a little wine okay oh. <clears throat> 25 are you both free from any terminal disease so you need to run tests you don't want to get into a relationship with someone only to discover that they have a disease that requires 200,000 per month or they have a disease that will require millions of dollars uh, sorry millions of naira every year to keep them going and then you realize you just enter and all your life is in and out of hospital you need to look at all these things because many times people are just looking for um, a place to go and crash next 26 are you attracted to each other physically is there a physical attraction so that you're not going to be forcing it and struggling to connect 27 do you both have sources of income that covers your expenses do you both not does the man do you both have sources of income because all this uh, your money is my money our money all this thing i've been saying it <laughs> money is causing trouble in marriage you many people and with this fuel crisis uh fuel subsidy removal and many things our strength will increase school fees will increase transport will increase food will increase <laughs> you better sit down and say to <coughs> so two people must work or oh, the days of only the man working and bringing money is as expired though everybody must be bringing something to the table so before you marry settle it so that you will not go and get married and say hey, the man is irresponsible and the woman is irresponsible because there are a lot of men that once you begin to take responsibility as a woman they just settle down they are irresponsible people so you need to settle that before you go into the relationship number 28 what initiated your relationship this relationship you are in what was the foundation like they say the wife that we got married to in the nightclub it is dance that will carry her away so where do you meet? What was the initiation? What connected two of you together? 29. Is there a mutual flow or a one-sided love and one-sided giving? Some people are in a relationship and the love is one-sided. One person is the one loving, making the phone call, giving, giving their time, giving their affection, giving their resources. The other person is just saying, hey, you know the way I am, you know the way I am. And they are not making any attempts. Fire on the mountain. Run, run, run. 
30, do you spend time communicating or just touching? A lot of people, because they don't have an agenda for their courtship, when they come together, it's touchy, 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 touchy. They are just talking sensual without being sen sensible. So you need to make sure that you have effective communication. 31, do you talk freely with each other or only when others are present? Can you be alone and talk and have a good communication and conversation? Or is when people are there that you can talk? 32, do you have intimacy or only romance? So if you are married, are you intimate or just romance? Just romance? Then, because intimacy is more than sex. So for a lot of people in marriage, all they do is sex, but they are not really intimate. And there is a journey that takes you into intimacy. So you need to go from spiritual to emotional to sexual. And that's for married people. 33, what do your parents think of your partner and the relationship? Before you go into a relationship, what are your parents thinking? Because you need parental consent in order for you to get married. You need parental consent. Over 82% of marriages that get into trouble do not have parental consent. And God that used your parents to bring you into the world knows the importance of your parents. And then we also have found that a lot of people, because they have found out that... Um, people want to do the will of God and the Bible says honor your father and mother so that this may be long we now have a lot of irresponsible parents that want to manipulate their children when it comes to the issue of marriage so you need to seek counsel on how to undo that in case you have parents that are confused and difficult then 34 what does your pastor think of your partner and the relationship Pastors do not choose spouses for people. That's not our job. That's not our responsibility. But as authority figures in your life, if you honor and respect us, then you can seek our opinion. And our opinion does not have to be God's opinion. At the end of the day, we will advise you. You choose to take the advice or not. But when the consequences come, you also face the consequences of your obedience or disobedience. Then 35, what kind of reputation does he or she have? Now, they may have a good reputation, but they are not good. They may have a bad reputation, but they are not bad. So find out what the reputation is and know what you know, to do. 36, how does he or she relate with his or her friends? How do they relate with their friends? Because, see, someone that gossips with you about others will gossip with others about you. You are going to be the next chapter of that gossip series so make sure that you look at the way they relate with their friends look at the way they relate with people that they consider to be friends and let that be wisdom to you to see if this person can do some this to the person he calls friends hmm, fire on the mountain then how does he or she relate with his or her family parents and siblings people that talk bad about their parents talk bad about their siblings to you <laughs> they will talk bad about you to other people it doesn't mean that they will be packaging and protecting without giving you facts and figures but when people are just trying to malign people and they're always very negative and pessimistic be careful because people that are negative and pessimistic about everybody that is their nature it means they will do the same with you and about you it's only a matter of time um how does he or she treat other people how does he or she treat other people a a company was trying to um, employ an executive and um, the final part of the interview was a chat the uh, chairman of the company asked the two finalists to meet him at the restaurant so that they can have um, lunch together so they had lunch had a nice time and at the end of the um, meeting he greeted them appreciated them and he chose someone that was not as qualified academically experience wise as the person that will get get the job so the other guy contacted him as they said i thought i did very well i don't know why is, what did i do wrong so that i would know how to do better next time what is it that i did wrong and he said well <clears throat> when we went to the restaurant i noticed that you sat down with a sense of entitlement and the other person was very caring very cautious and very loving and very kind to everybody. The way you were speaking to the waiters, every time they come, you never said thank you, you never used the word please, you were just treating them as if they are nobody. I don't want that kind of person in my company because as, as a, the position you're going to occupy will require that you work with all kinds of people, uh, middle level manager, low level manager, and junior staff, and I don't want you treating people with a bossy attitude. So that's the reason why I chose him and not you. And that's where emotional intelligence comes in. So many times you need to look at how they treat other people. 
39 is he or she prepared in the seven areas of maturity you know we said that before now you need to be spiritually matured emotionally matured mentally matured socially matured physically matured morally matured and financially matured those are the seven areas of maturity so have you checked the person on those seven areas because it will show even in marriage number 40 in what ways do you hurt each other in what ways do you hurt each other you know i've said this over and over again you know when you are in courtship let's assume you caught for let's say two years or three years and you meet each other once a week so if you caught for two years you meet once a week it means you've met 24 times in two years yeah mathematics once a week no once a week is 52 plus 52 104 okay so in two years you meet 104 times if within those two years that you met 104 times you have had 10 major crises major argument that in fact you have to sometime not call each other you have to get somebody involved in two years 10 times now because the timing is spaced you may not know that you are in a deep crisis so let's break 104 days into months when you get married so when you get married that's an average of 30 days a month so 104 days is like three and a half months so think about it if you fight 10 times in three and a half months are you seeing how destabilized your life will be so what are the ways you are hurting each other now no because when you get married it will be multiplied times 50. multiplied times 50 in the sense that you are now living with the person you are supposed to be sleeping on the same bed with this person in the same room waking up with the person and the person is hurting you it will be multiplied by 50 the effect will be dangerous so make sure you look into all these things number 41 have you seen him or her reacted outside an ideal situation have you seen the way they are when they are angry how do they deal with things when they are disappointed when someone hurts them when you know when they are happy when they have money when they don't have money have you have you been able to look into okay outside that ideal situation how does this person behave this is how point has because many times you are shining your heart and you're not shining your brain and then you get you become a casualty in the world of love 42 have you discussed your gender differences you know we look at the clash of the titans the uniqueness of each gender have you discussed it these are all the things you are supposed to be doing in courtship oh not just drinking the, going to cinema the, taking popcorn and ice cream 43 does he or she understand love what's their definition of love 44 do both of you understand marriage what's the definition of marriage 45 do you both understand yourselves so that you can teach each other how to love each other 46 does he or she understand you have you do you even understand you to educate them about you then 47 does he or she really love you and we have told you three things that will help you to know whether a man really loves you so all those things have been sorted out number 48 does he or she really care for you do they care for you 49 is he or she really committed to you 50 does he or she really agree that love is not enough because if they don't agree that love is not enough <laughs> that means they are living in an idealistic world where they think that love we undo everything don't worry let's just love each other and then when life happens they see themselves behaving and they are wondering why they are doing what they are doing okay 51 does he or she really understand singleness that even though you are married you still have to be single <laughs> that means you have to be whole 52 is he or she really single are they whole singleness is not like told you, it's not about married or married no singleness is a state of wholeness so whether you are married or single or wh whether you are married or unmarried you are supposed to be single that means you're supposed to be whole 53 is he or she usually happy cheerful and optimistic or are they always sad and looking morose like a sadducee when you see people that are not exciting is that the kind of boring person you want somebody who cannot watch film and giggle together and roll on the floor together what kind of life is that one 54 do you have mutual interest and goals do you have mutual interest and goals 55 can both of you discuss controversial issues without argument or anger 
you see how the last um, election destroyed many marriages and many families just because somebody is uh, obedient and somebody is batified and somebody is uh, what's uh, articulated <laughs> somebody is obedient batified articulated and they see as they, they cause themselves of twitter cursing their father 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 yeah. people are just all manner of unruly behavior husband fighting wife the religion muslim christian Igbo, yoruba they want scatter country and the people you are scattering country over they, they are friends they are not fighting themselves so can you people have arguments and you know controversial discussion without uh, everybody calling names and cursing people and throwing bottles by the time <laughs> you have destroyed television, destroyed fridge, destroyed everything, you now say, I'm sorry, but we are the one that have to spend money to replace it again. 56, have you been sincere and open to each other all through? Honesty is very key in any relationship. Have you been sincere and open to each other all through? 57, do you have mutual beliefs concerning morality, concerning your finances, concerning spirituality, concerning material acquisition these are things you sit down what is your understanding of morality because people are talking about open relationship now they are talking about threesome they are talking about all kinds of terrible things in a christian home in a christian home and you'll be amazed at all kinds of postulation that the enemy has brought into a christian home so you need to look at that aspect of morality finances what are your beliefs about finances what are, you need to see the, the spirituality some people believe you know let's just do that we don't have to go to church we can even do our own church at home and that's the person you are getting married to and raising children without god material acquisition because some people are materialistic they are not thinking vision 58 how do they react to financial questions and situations so some people if you ask them anything about money what? <laughs> they just become deceptive the they don't uh, <laughs> they begin to react ah, now question we ask oh, oh God, answer <laughs> 59 what gives both of you joy happiness and motivation you need to identify it 60 what are is or are bots do's don'ts likes and dislikes you need to identify that these are all things you sit down in courtship to help each other know and if for any reason you've messed up in courtship you can now use marriage to do catch up because once you are married you are married 61 does he or she have any element of secrecy are they secretive are they things they won't talk to you about and they go and talk to outsiders 62 is he or she generous and benevolent or they are tight-fisted anybody that is not generous run from their life oh because <clears throat> you will suffer for life 62 does he or she take advice or they are unteachable people that can't listen to anybody i don't listen to anybody i don't fear anybody i do what i want to do nobody can tell me what to do okay oh. <laughs> i hope you know that that nobody includes you too uh -huh. 64 is he or she diligent to work and the kingdom are they very diligent to their work because if they are not diligent in their work they can't be promoted if they are not committed to god they can't go far 65 is he or she fond of children do they love children do they want to have children are they okay with children 66 can he or she handle responsibility well or they shirk responsibility 67 are his or our values temporal or eternal 68 does he or she have investment mentality 69 is he or she in depth and how much no how much they are away before you marry them or i dealt with the case in abuja in fact the babe when they got married the guy did not know the girl was owing millions and the guy was just a small business owner they got married that's all ruined the guy's business creditor came after marriage and the guy's business was ruined it was 